Welcome back. Episode 126 of Revisited. And we had to essentially triple up on Jujutsu Kaisen because, of course, these things are fading from my mind. Fast. Um, So after this, don't expect any JJK for a while. Um, I don't know when we'll ever do one again, if we ever do one again. But uh, yeah, just don't expect it for a little while. We are talking about how Jujutsu Kaisen Shibuya Incident succeeds where My Hero Academia War Arc fails by Int Laser, I guess Entertainment Laser, um, or Lizer, or Lizer. Um, no, well, it w- depends. To be fair, they're not talking about the final arc. Yeah, no. Okay. Just that that sure. that arc also has the 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 previous war arc has a lot of issues as well mm-hmm. um yeah i i'd like to see because what we know one of the comparisons yeah, of course um but what else could it possibly be everybody gets a turn to fight mm-hmm. um people go through character development a lot of people go through quote-unquote character development And Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, um, it, feel, it feels more interconnected because there's a lot of miniature fights going on that can spill over and do spill over into different fights. As opposed to, we just got the big giant over here. We got what we're doing with Shiggy <coughs> over here. And there's not really a lot of interweaving fights. So let's see. But even even still, is that necessarily a good thing to, um, to have just, oh, I can just hop into this fight over here? It's a different thing. And, and different does equal good. <coughs> What's going on? My goodness. Yeah. Uh, um. JJK Shibuya incident and My Hero Academia's Paranormal Liberation fronts are very structurally different, are very structurally similar arcs. While one of them has gone on to be a pretty iconic. How? In Monica how do you Shonen, go? How do you go on to become iconic? Pretty iconic. <laughs> pretty iconic. It's not even uh, fully iconic. It is on the, the periphery of iconic. Yes. Pretty iconic. <laughs> like well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, the other is a lot more derisive. Let's find out why. So I guess Shibuya incident is the iconic. Yeah, you know, I saw a tweet iconic. recently where it was like um, a bunch of scenes from anime that have the potential to take over the discussion for a week or a month once they're animated. And I, I oh, yeah. I was in the process of quote tweeting that. Mm. And I was just like, I, I just don't feel like yeah. having this discussion. Sometimes you just got to let it go. But the discussion would be, it is very telling that it takes a thing to be animated to become the talk of the week or the talk of the month. It just tells me that your consumption is based purely on seeing the colors and hearing the music and the voice acting and such, as opposed to truly absorbing just the plot, just what's going on at the moment, blah, 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 blah. Um, Yep. So uh, I guess we just get into it. There's not much to discuss. Yeah, my hero sucks, but probably going to end up having to defend it, or maybe not. Maybe it will be agreement stuff. What did we do for the the Hunter Hunter? Did we kind of defend that or no? Nah? We must just said the same old boy of human and and well, ants. the comment section surely doesn't. I don't know what's going on yeah, with it. That's fine. JJK Shibuya incident and MHA's Paranormal Liberation War are arcs that, on paper, are very similar. They're both arcs. Uh, can you stop reading the descriptions? <laughs> <laughs> that are supposed to be pivotal moments in the story where the progression of the antagonist's abilities, skills, and knowledge leads to an all-out altercation between the good guys and the bad guys. Um, that's very, based on what? Yes, yeah, very surface level. 
Uh, villains have a thing and Hero wants to stop them. So there's a lot of people going in to fight those people. But like, at the same time, why does why is he going? It's meant to be a thing. Like, what is your what are you basing on that shows that is meant to be that thing? Just what came? How do you deride the meaning of what the off the authorial intent of what they were going for based off of your perception of what that arc mm -hmm. meant? leading to moments that will forever change the direction of a story. But the difference in execution between these two is something I find absolutely fascinating. While MHA mostly fumbles and stumbles what could and should have been the most interesting arc in the entire series, JJK Shibuya Incident has already become one of the most acclaimed and iconic arcs in modern shonen history. It already has become. It already say, has become one of the most prolific and iconic uh, arcs in modern shonen history it's a lot there's of a lot of qualifiers and a lot of past present and future tense there and and this is a and this is a situation where i would, would just want to ask that person what do you mean by iconic mm -hmm. do you just mean notable do you just mean recognizable and that's truly what people mean when they say iconic these days it's just notable recognizable in the zeitgeist of whatever the discussion is at the moment but they're, that's not really using it as praiseworthy. It's just notable. Because if Donald Trump says something stupid, that's pretty notable. Can you say that that's iconic? Yes, if you say that could. that's iconic, yeah. then you're not using the word as a positive thing. You're just using it as a recognizable or notable or whatever thing. That a you're synonym using for from. that. So you're, you're just, by going, it's become iconic. You're just going, it's just it's just become recognizable, which is not really a praise or a negative. It's just, oh, hey, I recognize that thing. So how exactly did Jujutsu Kaisen manage to outperform My Hero Academia in a structurally similar story arc? Well, let's find out. Before I continue, I'd just like to say that I am not a writer. I did not take any classes in writing, so it's possible that I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. Oh, you don't need to be a writer or take writing classes. You just can recognize that stories have structure and talk about those things. Does a person need to be a basketball player to be an analyst of basketball absolutely not you just have to study things and deride your own information based off the things that you've studied yeah. who cares if you have a a paper that says you got enough of a grade to be a thing yeah. i'm not a game designer but this game has bugs well you, you don't have to say that you're not a game designer you can say that this game just has bugs the level design isn't good because it's not leading you to where you should be led. It's just kind of letting you go all over the place with no real direction of where you should be headed. And that's why you need waypoints and such, which they do not employ. And you're just kind of lost 80% of the time until you find out specifically where you need to go. And do I design games? Absolutely not. But that is a criticism that can be levied against the game if it happens. You don't need... This is very much the argument of if you don't like the game so much, go make your own game. Like, no, I'm talking about the game that I'm playing now. I'm talking about the movie, the TV show I'm watching now. Nothing being said here is supposed to be objective. So, Oh, he's hitting all the points. <laughs> Our boy, get in there. If you say a if you say Yuji Itadori is a sorcerer, that is objective. This happened in Jujutsu Kaisen. This happened in My Hero. That is objective. Stop just with this objectivity, subjectivity thing. Just get your off. This whole video is mostly just my opinion. The biggest no, sh literally no problem with MHA's war arc is that despite it being full of very interesting ideas and singular fantastic moments, none of it really connects or has a grand impact as it's supposed to be. And How do you judge the impact of it? Because I do think it had a yeah. grand impact on the overall narrative based on the things that have uh, succeeded it. As far as there was something he just said. Oh, interconnecting. It's literally yeah. what I just said. 
Uh, Muriel came back, but now we recognize that Aerie can rewind you back to a point where you had a quirk, and it works. And we see that she's training that up, and it's a bad moment. Don't get me wrong, but it and connects the, to the uh, previous arcs and everything. And the current moment is also bad. Oh, did you uh, did you happen to read the? Uh, of course, I did. I see. You didn't find it favorable, I, I take it? No. Oh. Yeah. I see. Jujutsu Kaisen. I mean, not Jujutsu Kaisen. My Hero Academia is such a bad series. Um, I can't believe they're getting off like this. Yeah. I can't believe people are clapping for this. You know what? I'm fine with people clapping for it. If you're just uh, enjoying what's happening, I have nothing against what you're doing. It's the people going. It's cooking unlike other shonen. Oh, yes. It's don't one go of, to Reddit. Well, I, do, I, I can't. I Good. get so mad. Good. There are there's a there's a line of you're mad where you're just like this isn't fun anymore. And, and I Reddit. know. Yeah, no, it's right. It's, <laughs> it's it's the chapter when the chapter comes out. It is the Reddit. Yeah, and I. It is, it is the Reddit. It is the people praising it. It's the people that's just going, what the f is this? And they're just going, well, you can't, and you don't understand, and then your airy was, it's like, So this whole video is mostly just my opinion. The biggest problem with MHA's war arc is that despite it being full of very interesting ideas and singular fantastic moments, none of it really connects or has a grand impact as it's supposed to be. MHA has always been a series that prioritized characters' actions having deep and lasting consequences, so it's extremely- What was Shoto's deep and lasting impact? I mean, a consequence. Yeah, I'd like him to explain that, especially considering you show Deku breaking his finger, and then he goes into a room and gets kissed and the finger is healed. Um, or Raka doesn't really have any. There are some characters that have long lasting impact because of the overuse and uh of their quirks, like uh Ida, where his legs are fucked up because he overused it in a way that he should not have been doing at that moment. But I'd like to see what he means. If he just means death, is that obviously this is leading into the Mirio thing of him coming back? Of course. But that's not a consequence of his quirk. That's a consequence of what happened in the story that has been reverted. Now let's see like, the consequence of uh, uh, Gojo being captured, but then he's released later on. Mm -hmm. That would be the same type of thing. Hey, this, this moment happened in this arc. He said that My Hero used to be about long-lasting consequences, and this is in this arc. No. <laughs> no. really disappointing to see so many fantastic moments be subsequently ruined by fake-outs and just very safe writing. Bakugo getting impaled right at the end of one episode is an absolutely shocking and jaw-dropping event. Combine this with his inner monologue and the sheer intensity of a- Oh, he didn't die. Yeah, I don't- But Nobara died. Did you expect him to just die on the spot right yeah, there? Because Nobara died. Uh, Nanami, he got lit on fire right on panel, and then half of his body is just on fire. So the Volcano Man just lights him on fire and just goes, well, you are now deceased, and I will not check on you. I will not keep the fire going. Half, your one of your sides is not singed at all. So I can just accept this and move on. And then he gets up and has enough energy to start beating up or killing um those transfigured humans. So, so that does that is that the consequence that you're looking for? Yeah, um, he's dead now. I was gonna talk about Yakuza Four for a second, but then I just decided not to because I'm not fond of that game. Really? I mean, I personally don't care about spoilers. I it'd just be a long time about something that nobody I mean, cares about. At, at the end of the day, we're a minute and a half in, and we've got 15 minutes recorded. But, this is going to be a short one. Yeah, but he hasn't really started cooking. <laughs> ...fight that preceded all of this, the audience is led to believe that something big had just happened. Now, we all know- It did, but he didn't die. That's all it is. Mm -hmm.
know that Bakugo isn't going to die, anyone with half a brain knows that Horikoshi isn't going to kill off his most popular character at this point in the story. But the problem is, there's no consequence for this, so this moment is effectively ruined. JJK also runs in- What is- Oh, okay. Here we go. ...into a similar problem here, where Gojo, who's the most popular character, and not coincidentally, also the most powerful, cannot die in a huge war arc. But JJK does something really smart. Throughout season 1 of JJK, the audience learns to associate Gojo with safety and security. From the very first episode, right up until his last appearance, you can pretty much expect Gojo's presence to be the end of any conflict. Then in season- But that's not the same thing for Bakugo! He struggles, he fights, he does not just automatically- he's not a win button! So, removing him isn't automatically a loss button! But he- I think he's saying that, um, this is better in this aspect. Because, yes, it is taking him away, but it's adding to the story So by taking him away. Instead of Bakugo, it's just a big shock moment. Here, you're taking him away and you're so taking away So why are you equating it if it's basically an apples to oranges comparison? Yes, they're both fruits, but literally they're not the same fruit. Maybe, because that's, maybe that's not what he's talking about, though. I'll say that. I'll run it back. <laughs> the hidden inventory arc not only reaffirms this, but by giving us a mini arc that delves into his backstory, it also makes you care a lot more about him. So what does the Shibuya incident arc do almost immediately? Gojo's gone. Getting rid of Gojo is the decision that makes the Shibuya incident so impactful, because the trump card- But then he comes back! Because the trump card of our heroes is gone, so the stakes feel much higher than before. But then is no trump card in my hero academia yeah, so how can away. you what's I, the comparison you're you going can't compare bakugo's moment to this it's good that they're taking away the biggest strongest dude in this but in here over here they just killed baku they just quote unquote injured bakugo and nothing really came of it that's what he's talking about with the consequences there are consequences to Gojo being But their up. roles are different, so of course yeah. the consequences... It's, this is not a fair comparison The comparison would be All Might, which they took away eventually, mm -hmm. and he never comes back. Uh, all Might <laughs> does not come back. Yeah, but... <laughs> asterisk, asterisk. <laughs> now, this is where most stories would immediately... Are you going to f***ing show those stories? falter and that is by not living up to the very high stakes that have just been established and by way? not killing characters by not having heroes lose please show some examples of this but jjk go no <laughs> no most stories would falter but not JJK. The discussion is so easy to have when you could just go others and most and not like this. Without showing the examples, you're not showing your work. Yeah. You're saying, you're saying, you're not only putting down my hero, which is an example that you gave, a poor example, but an example nonetheless. But now you're also going most other. You've you've added a lot of other shonen into this this category, and you're not explaining what they are, how they would fumble the bag. You're just saying they would, and JJK is better because they don't. It was the full mile with this. We know that the curses are dangerous because of what happened with Junpei, and we know that all the sorcerers are in immediate danger because all of the strongest curses are present in Shibuya. So there's already this huge tension when these fights start going down. So when JJ the tension would have been there regardless because Gojo can't be everywhere at all times. Like um the first time quote unquote uh Yuji quote unquote dies, Gojo's not there to save him. And plus okay, if they yeah. have contingency plans like this to at least stall them out, they can do other things in other places and kill other people. So he can still essentially accomplish their goal actually kills off some of its supporting and main Yeah, cast. they do. Yeah, they actually kill people. Again, you got Nanami. Nobara is out of commission. As we know it. Today. As we know. And who else? I wonder if people would go back. Like, if Nobara... Um, started fighting tomorrow. 
Would they go back and lower their praise of Shibuya incident based off of future knowledge? Because it's really easy to praise something in the moment when you don't know what's to come. When you've got um, my heroes legitimately completed thing, basically we're almost done. And you're looking at something like Jujutsu Kaisen and you're just reading, watching the Shibuya incident. And it's just like, well, yeah, this is essentially, I think it started off in like chapter 75, chapter 76, not even halfway through the series. It's impactful. Yeah, it is impactful, baby. Everything. Rip my boy of Mechamaru, the super important character, Mechamaru, who is a legitimate trainer. Rip, boy. Everything is impactful if it impacts somebody. I read a lot of Slice of Life. I said it in the last one. Characters that will just hold hands is impactful based on the story. Tadano just going, hey, I like you, Comey, and don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Not like that fridge. Like a, I want to be your boyfriend. We not dancing around this no more. No more misunderstanding. That is completely <laughs> impactful. Comey just sitting next to Tadano in the Christmas story is impactful. Uh, other things that I will not spoil because DA will read them in the future is impactful. This going on in Liar Sonsky is fin impactful. I slowly take a sip of my drink. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Please read Liar Sonsky. Delicious. delicious. Uh, Apothecary Diaries, Revelation, a uh, revelation happened recently. That, that's impactful. It yeah. doesn't sing matter. Death is not the only way to make things impactful. Death does not make things more impactful than just somebody being injured. It's getting so frustrating. This is such episode 19 discussion because we're just going in a loop of the same mm. type of stories. We, and we understand that the moths die in this, but you just got... there's. Nine people that died. Nine people of importance in Shibuya. Mekamaru, Hanami, the tree person. I don't know who this is. Diagon, Volcano Man, uh, Frames Per Second, Nanami, Nobura, Mahito. Half of them are villains. Nobura might not be dead. I, I'm not counting her as a death until we get confirmation. I think uh, that right there is the major difference between MHA's war arc and the Shibuya incident. Not to say that the paranormal liberation war isn't impactful, but because of how it's written, it just doesn't feel as great as a war arc should be. Because people didn't die. Mm -hmm. But then no. they do list those people that died. They may not be as Midnight important. Midnight died. But there's a big list of people that died. It's not like, oh, in all, uh, Eraserhead died. But people do die in that. You can say what you want about whether it's impactful or not. But if your thing is death, then people have died. If your thing is impact, then we could talk about impact. But if you're talking about impact through death, then that's, that's just such a narrow thing that you have to praise it for. It's not even worth talking about. Killing off characters and having darker tones doesn't impact immediately make a story better okay. but i feel like a war arc should be you know like a war like where people actually die and there are serious physical emotional and mental consequences you're showing miracle yeah. who lost her arms and legs deku went on a whole crusade of darkness bit based on this moment on this arc emotional and mental consequences you say like, like so the happen. hero society was essentially broken based off of this because, because of, dobby. of dobby that happened <laughs> it does happen it, it it and people died it literally happened literally happened literally everything you said a war arc should be my heroes is so now you got to look at the writing itself as opposed to the overarching things that make the writing good that my hero literally did. 
It's starting to get so frustrating. And you see, that's the defending that we need to do. Because this mom, there are bad things that you can talk about in My Hero, but you ain't doing it right. So now we got to defend. You're just going, well, ain't no impact. <laughs> And the audience should care about these consequences when twice I do care about miracles on yeah. the legs being taken, but she don't care because she's the best. It doesn't matter to her. And that's she's why it matters to there. me. Dies because we spent time with him and had an entire arc in the previous season dedicated to the League of Villains. We feel impacted by his death. Oh, why yeah, should you this happens in this arc mm -hmm. um do we feel impacted by volcano man's death why and if we do for what reason why would we feel impacted by nanami's death over midnight's death when we spent both time with both of them because he had like an arc and a half of a fight he's strong is that enough is it enough i love nanami he's my favorite character in jujutsu kaisen but if you probably look up frame by frame, panel by panel, they probably have a good amount of equal screen time, especially considering Jujutsu Kaisen was in like chapter 70 when he died. Not chapter 70, like a little past 100. And Midnight was in the two, two 300s. He's not even one of the good guys. When it comes to the heroes, there is basically no impact because the audience doesn't care about any of the deaths the heroes face. Like So I there's... Who is the audience here? Because there are people that did care that Midnight died. Mm -hmm. If you personally don't care, that's okay. But you can't say the audience didn't care. And just having, you said, just having deaths doesn't make it automatically good. But Eraserhead lost the ability to functionally use his quirk and a leg. Is that not impactful? In this arc, you showcase twice dying. So you see, you recognize that there are impactful deaths in this arc. So it must just be there aren't enough. Jujutsu Kaisen does, does it more. more. And it's more just better. Can you, I don't think that that should be qualified as better just because it does more of them. I didn't even know who Crust was before he died because there was a complete lack of focus on his character prior to his death. Even That's fine, but you know who Twice he is. Even you know midnight, who Midnight is. Even Midnight. Midnight, whose death is supposed to shock us the most, feels so hollow because who cares? What? Who cares about Nanami? Yeah. I can make that exact same argument. What's the difference in our... Who cares about frames per second, man? Couldn't even tell you his name. Who cares? Oh, who cares but, about Volcano Man? But I'm sure there are people that do care. Don't devalue those people caring because you personally don't care. What do we actually know about Midnight? What do I know about Nanami? What do I know about frames per second, man? I know she's a hero. She understands that um, there you have to do this beauty as a woman. She likes being naked. She likes uh, showcasing her body and she will protect people when it when the time comes, regardless of what's going on. She has faith in people such that she just went, Momo, you can do this. And she did do it. What do we know about her other than the fact that she's a hero who sometimes teaches her students? Midnight's death is indicative. What's the difference between Nanami? We got a little bit of his backstory. So did we with Midnight and Vigilante. Yeah, I'm I'm going I'm matching up twice and um Nanami. Those are the impactful deaths of the arc. Uh the hero villain doesn't matter. You're talking about impactful deaths. Of a larger issue with MHA's war arc, and it's that the story doesn't want to have consequences anymore. No. You're literally showing a consequence. Yeah, yeah, it's just one that you don't care about. There's something different than not having a consequence. Sure, you must realize this. This is a consequence that you just don't care about. Don't say that it's not a consequence because she is factually dead. How much impact does it have on a series? That doesn't matter, but it is a consequence because there is now a hero that is not in here. If she was still a hero, she would not have quit like uh, Death Arms did. She's still been out there on the front lines. She would have been helping people. So that is a consequence. Now you might say, that's ridiculous. Midnight is a recurring character that died. And you'd be right. 
but it's that thing that writers do where they kill off less important characters to make it seem like there's more tension in the story than there actually is. Like Nanami? Like frames per second, yeah. man? What are we doing here? Like Nobara, let's be honest. She had one fight, one half of a fight in this mug. Main characters and fan favorites will always have Muff a lot of in, um, um, Nanami was just like, no, bro, you got to go. You're not strong enough. You stay here. Plot armor, and this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Plot armored characters don't mean that the story can't have its deaths be impactful, but in the case of MHA's war arc, it would be a lot more interesting if characters we had actually grown to know died. And I have a sneaky- They did. Um, it would be more interesting to who, you? Cause I, I personally wouldn't find it more interesting if like Mina died. Yeah, I'd, I would. I'd find maybe the story that uh, succeeds it, that precedes it would be more interesting is being able to see the way characters interact and grow and that type of thing and come to grips with her death. But that's an entirely different story altogether. Just having a character die does not make anything more interesting to me. Ace dying does not make One Piece or the Marine Four arc more interesting to me. I don't like the Marine Ford arc. Love Impel Down, but I don't like Marine Ford. That is the impactful death. Suspicion that this was Horikoshi's original plan. Early on in the arc, we have moments between Kaminari and Jiro that imply a romantic pairing, which prior to this was only really vaguely hinted at through gags and minor conversations. But because of how it's framed, naturally I assumed that we were bracing to see one of these characters either be seriously injured. Oh, oh that's you just had your, your expectation yeah. and, it and it was did not through. met. But you had the expectation that characters were going to die in Jujutsu Kaisen, and they did, so clap. Yeah, I don't think that this story is worse for giving characters moments where they hint towards more of a relationship, and you just go death flags. I don't think it is worse because you interpret it in a certain way. Or die. And I know this isn't enough evidence to wholeheartedly prove my theory, but... So you're literally just saying, I understand I'm pulling this out of my butt, but hey, maybe. maybe. Consider how we actually got a whole arc where Jira was essentially the main character and we actually got to know a lot more about her. I think killing her off at this point in the story would serve as a huge dramatic and emotional blow to the audience. So I mean, give her an arc and then immediately kill her. And because we got her art, it is completed. And now she no longer serves the story outside of giving a character motivation. So she may be allowed to die. Not that she put herself in a situation where she could be killed. No, I'm going to point to you. You have had development die. You can only die once you have development. This is very much the um, seventh book of Harry Potter where Harry's just walking around. It's just like, oh, Tonks and Remus are dead. <laughs> <laughs> like, it means nothing. You've got to be smart about these things. Because of MHA's power creep, these final- I don't think it is smart to give a character a an backstory, arc. an arc, and then give her death flags within this arc and then kill her. I don't think that that's smart. That's That's- Put, it's literal death flags of all the people on screen that could die well she just had an arc so she can go eventually have to leave most of class 1a out of major fights so decommissioning a few of them along the way right here would be pretty clever it would be it wouldn't be clever no it would just be putting them in it would just be injuring them or killing them because the, you have in your mind, you have what a war arc is, and that should be consequences where people are hurt, killed, uh, injured in some grievous way. And this doesn't happen, so you, you count it as a negative. Absolutely ridiculous if Jiro fought against All for One or something. That, that, that has nothing to do with this arc. Nope. That has nothing to do with her not dying or this moment or anything. She didn't die. So this because she didn't die, that allowed this moment to happen. That that has nothing to do with that.
absolutely ridiculous. Deku completely destroys his arms in a desperate battle against Shigaraki, and despite the show making such a big deal out of this, nothing happens. He switches his style entirely to kicking. Deku's body has apparently adjusted and was able to withstand him going all out. I hate this so much. Up yes. until this point, yeah. there's been no, so much focus on Deku's gradual growth as he molds his body to be able to better use one for all. But suddenly, he can just use 100% multiple times and nothing happens? Yep. Remember when he literally changed up his entire fighting style because he couldn't keep straining his arms? This is why this arc feels so hollow. It's given the illusion of consequences while never fully committing to any of the Pause. incredibly- you've, you've talked about the deaths that happen, which do have consequence, but don't have impact. Two totally different arguments. Deku's arms, absolutely. Bakugo, which you've already said that there's no way that he's going to kill his most popular character. So you've already admitted that it wouldn't happen. So what are you talking about? He hasn't even really talked about Jujutsu Kaisen. He hasn't. He's just been slagging off my hero. He's Nanami died, and that's about what we got. The interesting conflicts it sets up, and a lot of that ends up bleeding into the villain hunt arc, but for the sake of this video, I'll only keep it to the war arc. Speaking of villains, holy hell, the Shibuya incident is the exact moment I realized that these curses were not playing around. Don't get me wrong, they were a threat in season 1, but we constantly saw them get absolutely dog-walked immediately after they did something crazy. Compare that with how much more threatening and dangerous they are here, and it's night and day. Well, I find it- Um, of all the people that died, who killed them? Mahito killed Nobura, potentially. Nah Mahito killed Nanami. Um, Mahito killed Mekamaru. I don't remember how frames per second died. <laughs> I'm sorry, frames per second, but I don't remember. I don't remember him being around. Was it the fish guy? No, because um, homeboy took him out. Did he die after? Didn't he? Did he die in the Maki raid? Nah, nah, I gotta look this up. Because he's on the list of... It's lost. Game rant, uh, every death at Shibuya arc. Uh, dang it, what it's, was his name? <laughs> I can't just look up frames for a second. Yes, you can. Uh, my, no, because we, I would get uh, in Twitter videos just going, oh, the frames per second. Uh, Where's my phone? I'm going to look up. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen frames per second. Oh, yeah. You do that. <laughs> Uh, now be toes. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> um, okay, so he lost an arm mm -hmm. and against the fish guy. Oh, yeah, Toto lost his arm. Was he set on fire? Is that how he died? Because that's where his um, his thing ends. Oh, wait, no, that's a Billy Joe. Oh, is it? How did you die? Did you die? Are you alive? Okay, I'll look up death. There we go. That's smarter. I don't know why I didn't do that. Died as a result of his injuries he received during the Shibuya incident. Even after losing an arm, he bravely continued to fight. Uh... Okay. Yeah, Jogo kills him. Yeah, the, the flame. Okay, so yeah, Volcano Man kills him, um, but he only scorches half of Nanami's body. So, that so he, he got to kill in a half. A more impactful death. So why did he die when Nanami did not die? Interesting that both Shigaraki and Mahito have abilities that basically mean if they touch you, you're dead. Yet Maito feels far more dangerous because we've seen him kill characters we care about time and time again. No, we've seen him kill two characters that we care about and a potential character. One of those characters was on death's door already. Yeah. Another one of those characters was not strong. He was getting baby molded. Another one of those characters literally was told you should not be here. So I don't think that that's very impactful because he he cost uh, Eraserhead his leg and his eye, put a big hole through Gran Torino. I'm sorry, just 
killing a character does not necessarily make you feel dangerous. Because no. there's so many times where most are just like, everything ne- it needs to be centered around not letting Shigaraki touch a mother. It, when they invaded uh, the JJA or whatever that was, that training, it was just like, do not let that mother f- touch you. The whole discussion with Dango is just like, I can close my hand around your <laughs> neck and you will disappear. And Deku's fing dying for air. <laughs> but he already said that he got pieced up uh, before. Mahito got pieced up before. Mm-hmm. But now all of a sudden he's more impactful because he killed some people. He killed Mekamaru. Yeah. Wasn't and he the- killed an already on death's door no Nanami. Hey, didn't you see Mekamaru wanting to be with everyone? And then the 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 love that was potentially there that it was crushed by the dangerous and nihilistic and evil Mahito. Don't roll your eyes. This is peak. Good thing he had post death in sorcery where he could put machines only for a little while that have autonomy and can give information uh, only for a little hey, while. Hey, whatever. Hey, whatever. Because this is goodbye now. Because now I guess my energy is gone. I guess the remaining years of his curse energy ran out care that crust is dead i would have cared if gran torino died but nope he's okay shigaraki punched a hole through this old man's yeah, body this, this and he's trash. perfectly fine in fact all of the villains in the war arc are just super lame do you remember when they invaded ua and it was legitimately terrifying because but they clearly they o- didn't do anything eraser head still had the abilities to use his power all might lost about an hour doing what he did, but you said that he became more impactful when he started killing people, even though he got pieced up. But here, they threatened a bunch of people. Killed nobody. Killed nobody. A bunch of students were able to hold them off. All might came and they went, we don't want that smoke. And they ran. Powered all the students. Remember when All For One's mere presence changed the entire atmosphere of an episode? And the war. And then he got pieced up by All Might! Crust sacrificed himself so that somebody else may live. That that did happen. You may not care about him. Oh, the pre his presence changed the atmosphere of an episode. What are you talking about? But we see that Shigaraki's ability is if I touch you, you will decay. He was touching Eraserhead, but he did not decay. So things happened later that legitimately happened, but they're not impactful. But things didn't happen earlier, but they were impactful, but there were no deaths. Mark, we have to remember that the villains that have supposedly become more and more powerful are being outsmarted and beaten by first year high schoolers. Pause. The only- they were outsmarted and beaten when they were weaker. So the heroes also got stronger because we see them going through training guards and everything. And it's not just the students because it's also professional heroes that are guiding them. So it, it's a war arc. It's a bunch of different people fighting. In the in the first arc with the Shigaraki stuff, it was just the students. Here is all sort. It's not only the students. It's a student from other classes. It's Muff and then pro heroes. Top ranked pro heroes. I'm sorry, but it's not. It, and they're making plans against this literal giant oaf. It's just, we just have to stop him. There's no plans with him. He's just rampaging. Hold him down. We need to stop him. He's going forward. How do we prevent him from going forward? He's not juking. He's not jiving. He's a stupid idiot. Uh, we got a big lady. We got a month that can create a bunch of... Sh- we got all this stuff. We got one of the smartest people in the class. Somebody that a pro hero said, you can handle this. And she did. This isn't, don't just say that they're just students because they're not just students. Aspect of the war arc I feel really works as intended is the reveal with Dobby. Not only does this work because it's a massive revelation, but also be- Ain't talking about JJK. No. 
He just wanted to slag off my hair. Which is fine. But just say the thing. Just say it out loud. With which your whole com chest. Completely changes how we both see Endeavor and Dobby. Not to mention it ties back into the ideas of the last few arcs criticizing how hero society actually works. MHA's war arc is so strange because it's clearly supposed to be this big story changing event that is based on what but it is a story changing it, it, event really, because, it literally changed the story because the hero society goes defunct essentially a bunch of them quit people don't trust heroes they start taking up arms themselves Deku leave the school Shigaraki becomes one of the most powerful people in history to the point where they needed stars and stripes to go hey can you handle this mother and no. That's a whole different discussion there. We're building up since All Might's retirement, but nothing really changes. Nothing really matters. No, they got Shigaraki out of the tank before he was completed, thus delaying the ultimate plan that they were going through. Twice died. You you counted this as a positive. Midnight died. Um, um, Hawks was shown to cruelly murder him, thus taking away his um approval with the crowd. Again, hero society completely turns to the point where they're like, no, kick that kid out. You can't say that there aren't consequences to this. You can't say that there's not impact to this. You can say you didn't care. You can say that it wasn't set up well enough. You can say it's bad. You can say that some of the things were ran back, but you can't say that it didn't happen. But he literally just spent eight minutes saying it didn't happen. There's a distinct lack of reaction from the students of Class 1A to almost all of the events that unfold. You literally showed the kids crying over midnight. Literally showed it. Hey, what's Yuji's reaction to Nobra's death? Oh, I see. Oh, I see. He got mad when it happened, but he was already mad because Anonymy died in front of him. It was just transference of head. Oh, no. <laughs> What was oh no, he got he got depressed and then Toto had to take him out of that. Yeah, and then it's over. Yeah, and then and you know what? Deku got depressed, and he ran away from the uh, them to go. I'm gonna hunt down villains. But it but once he walks away, it's just what what happened to Nobu? Oh. And this is kind of bad considering these are the characters we know and care about the most. How does Ida punching Deku for being reckless have far more emotional weight than multiple students coming across their teacher's corpse? There's because we know what Ida is going through. We've seen Ida. He's essentially going through what Deku had gone through. Mm -hmm. So he's going, you help me out of this. I got to help you out of this. That is a long term story coming to a fruition. I can understand you going that has a more emotional impact. But it still happened. If you're talking about what has you said this was your opinion, obviously. Yeah. But you can't say that it didn't it didn't have emotional impact for other people. Because what what if somebody says that this has Jekyll standing in the rain by himself has more emotional impact than all of uh, Shibuya Arc incident? You're like, what the f is you talking about? Well, you gotta explain yourself more because you just said Deku punching, um, I mean, either punching Deku just had more emotional impact. I explained why it had more emotional impact. You didn't. Or I could go into, but all of that would sort of end up bleeding into the villain hunt dark hero arc, so I'll save that for later, but I'll end with this. I will say, he has a weird way of pronouncing certain words later. It, it feels very much like sometimes the way Phil pronounces things. If you were to ask me what moments in JJK I believe will fondly stick with me, I would mention Dojo's capture. And he's released. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> this month has, has ramped up refreshing, I think to spite me. <laughs> Because no. he said it like three times in the space of like 20 minutes one time. I went, Phil, come on now. Nanami's death, Sukuna versus Jogo, and so many more that I can't. Why? Why, did they, why was that impactful? Why was Nanami's death impactful? Because you liked the character? Why was Miracle's fight not impactful? Which is awesome. Is, is that Gojo versus... um? A Sukuna, Sukuna thing more or less impactful than twice his death. What is the most impactful thing in, in Shibuya? What is the most impactful thing in the war? What Do are they the measure top up? five things? You can't just say, hey, hey this is it. 
because I don't know why you think this is it. Even begin to list from the Shibuya arc. On the other yeah, hand, there's, that, there's a bunch of stuff that I really liked in Shibuya that I can't even list. On the other hand, there's a bunch of stuff that I didn't like in this that I can't even list. So this means that Jujutsu Kaisen was better. To ask me what moments in MHA I think will stick with me, most of them wouldn't be from the war arc because MHA's war arc is, quite frankly, pretty forgettable in the- Hey, uh, how much of Jujutsu Kaisen have you consumed? Because it essentially has about three and a half arcs. And uh, the end of Shibuya was like chapter 156. So how much information could there be to be to carry over into your mind after you're done reading it? How many people are still going to be thinking about episode 19? There's going to be another episode 19. Grand scheme of things. It's masquerading as this epic, unforgettable climax, oh, but it ultimately- It's so not a climax! It's yeah, the, no, it is- it, it is a setup more than anything! Yeah, there's more arcs after it. Shibuya is not a climax. But what about- Is there nothing that you think is memorable? Not not Miracle going, well, when it's time to go, it's time to go. But it's not my time right now. I still got some kicks in me. Yeah, we, we're talking about, because she's the, she, all right? She, 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 she. So that's that's not it. You said that you like twice, so that's not memorable. I don't, you, you've you mentioned the obvious bad stuff, but he didn't even mention uh, Muriel coming back. Nope. He didn't even mention f in um, Magician Man just going, I am the, the, the grandson of, of the this great guy that was mentioned two times. Applause! Stop being shallow, disappointing, and not that interesting at the end of it all. Cool. Shallow, disappointing, not that interesting. Didn't even say it was bad. It's I, I don't care about it being not interesting because different things are interesting to different people. Impactful, different things are impactful to different people. What was bad about it? What was the poor writing? Characters didn't die. Yeah, wow. What, so what, what are his issues with it? Characters didn't die. He showed characters dying. Um, it didn't have impact. It literally did have impact. He just didn't care about it. Um, it didn't really change anything. It literally changed a bunch of Again, there are, this is not a good arc. Yeah, no, never, don't get it twisted. I know the people that are gonna comment that don't usually watch us. They've long- We're not long. defending. We're not defending My Hero Academia's war arc or My Hero Academia as a whole because it is a bad, it has become a very bad series. And this was a very bad arc that we screamed about as it was happening. It is just, this guy is yeah. such a terrible explainer of why it's bad. It's not bad because it's not impactful. It's not bad because it doesn't have deaths. He's just going, yeah, those are the reasons why it does. And Jujutsu Kaisen is impactful, no examples given. And it is, it does have a lot of deaths. It has part nine. Is, this arc was just the beginning of what I would call the downfall of my hero academia. No. Oh, dude, you, you are late to the party. Yeah. That invitation said we end at 11 and you came at one in the morning. But that's a story for another video. Until next time, I'm out of here. 9.5. Yeah, it just did not. He sucks. It's just, it's very easy to explain. We always say it's super easy to explain yourself. Especially when you're making a comparison like this. Two big war arcs. Mm -hmm. And all you got is deaths. Obvious. Impact. But again, we got three i didn't even know frame per second died yeah you had to look it up but and it wasn't even really readily available information the announcement did come later with somebody walk, walking out of the room and just going frames per second is dead so but you look at the scene you go oh nanami got up and started walking around so he's probably fine as well oh he's just not yeah because he's not okay then yeah i Death being what it is, it's just super lame to yeah. be that is what it is. Yeah, this is just clearly somebody who, who enjoys Jujutsu Kaisen a lot. Of course. Um, This is an, an easy... How much have they seen? What? How much have they seen? Keep going. Uh, this is an easy arc to bash. This is an easy arc to praise. Mm -hmm. 
So people are going to flock to it. You don't really have to explain yourself because, yeah, Bakugo getting stabbed didn't really amount to anything. And that is something to be agreed upon. And Nobra getting her face blown out maybe amounted to something. We don't know. But I can't count that as a positive, a negative, or really anything until we see the outcome of it. Because people were talking about, I get bits and pieces, um, Sukuna's soul can be attacked and she can attack soul. So people are just like, maybe they, they're going to nail the finger, get him in a second, and then somebody cuts his head off or something. But if she's alive, if she's dead, like, curtain down, Yuji's alive, Megami's alive, and she's just dead and you just go, what rip Nobra? Isn't that kind of super lame? So just based upon, like, the... There's nothing to be gained from her death, mm -hmm. especially after all this time. No hard confirmation. I'm going with she's alive. Oh, yeah. Not that I personally care outside of that. I like her as a character because I don't know what's going on within the series itself. But that for character wise, I think that it's better if she's just alive instead of just at like, this point. We've defeated Sakuna and then like epilogue, they're praying in front of her grave and you just go, oh, she's dead. Where that's just a release of oh she's just dead. There's no real emotion tied in there, right? Man in there, but you know she doesn't she doesn't have a domain. She did one black flash too. She did it the first time she activated it and then against Mahito. No, if you say so. <laughs> you don't remember old dude and was just like my brothers, you guys. No, killed. no, the second time. Oh yeah, uh, against Mahito she did it because okay. he said this is my natural enemy. She's also part of it. Well, it could have just been she's attacking my soul. Which, it was part of it, but yeah. yeah if you say she did a Black Flash, who am I to disagree? Yeah. Because it is, it is now being, it is right-click, empty recycle bin. <laughs> I will now proceed to forget about Jujutsu Kaisen and it being replaced with more important information. Like, who is the giant in One Piece? And, uh, what was another question that people asked? I don't know. I don't care. I can't even remember what a question y'all must ask. All right. Um, yeah. Get, get that out of here. Yep. Regular make, episode. Make better stuff. Make, make, make better inspired. arguments. Because this. Explain your argument. This video blew up. This has a lot of views. It's crazy. Half a million. And I don't see why it is. Well, obviously, outside of um, Shibuya, which is Auga, um, they probably put it out when Shibuya was going on. So people were searching for it. And the My Hero stock's going down, so people will be searching for yep. that. Um, it's bashing a lot of My Hero. It's not even really praising um, Jujutsu Kaisen outside of, look, uh, Nanami died. Muff didn't even mention Mechamaru, because why would you? I got more out of Sukuna versus Volcano Guy. Did you? Shogo. If right-click... <laughs> So you're just not going to say it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was just like, all right, what else I got to do with a day? <laughs> I, it's just, it's harder to remember when his mom it just didn't find anything. So it's just like, it's just why. And then right click empty. Like the refresh. Yeah, I just, I have reset. So I'm just like, okay. Fresh firmware. I'm out of here. I got stuff to do. S Sunday revisited is outside of the norm. I can. I can, I should be excused for that. I think I I shouldn't be blamed for not going wee woo. 